Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Greg O'Connor, and I'm the executive director here at Kensington Place of Redwood City, North Atherton. We're a dedicated memory care community where we promise to love and care for your family as we do our own. I would like to start off by saying thank you to our event partners with Institute on Aging. It is always a pleasure to work with like-minded companies that value the same thing that we do. IOA is a prominent in promoting quality of life and enabling aging adults to maintain their health, well-being, independence, and participation in the community. As we reflect on this last year and realize how important it was to provide that promise to our residents, I'm thankful for our partners like IOA that encourage these opportunities. At Kensington, our promise to love and care for our residents as family has been the basis of our work. This last year has been difficult and it's been an opportunity to grow with our family as we also ensure a quality of life for all of our residents living here with dementia. I'm proud of the community run here at Kensington and I, how well we love our residents and families as they are processing this new way of life. At Kensington, we have a passion for excellence in quality of care for our residents. We provide 24 hour onsite nursing, high care to partner resident ratios, a highly trained and competent team, enriching and meaningful activities and delicious dining entrees, which include texture modified and special diets, all within a beautiful and safe place that we like to call Home. We partner with organizations that share our values to make the world a better place for people living with dementia and their families. We support initiatives for education, awareness, fundraising, research, and cutting edge practices much like the Institute on Aging. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our moderator, Allison Moritz. Allison is a gerontologist who has worked with IOA for seven years. She's the program director for the Enrichment Center, which specializes in caring for seniors with various, various dementias and levels of severity. She is on the team developing IOA's new program, Companion, designed to support families through journeys of a dementia diagnosis. Her work with caregivers facilitating support groups and developing robust interim experiences with USF students has made her an advocate for families across the Bay Area. She's a member of the Creating Aging San Francisco Collective and enjoys incorporating the arts into our aging experience. Please welcome Allison. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, it's a true honor to be here today. Uh, I wanna big, uh, give a huge thanks to not only our panelists, but all of the attendees in the group here today. Um, we're gonna be talking about a very important subject that is really affecting all of us um, as a collective humanity and will continue to be the real big health indicator as we all age as a society together. So this is incredibly important work. And honestly, I don't know anyone who isn't affected in some way by dementia. So today we're honored to speak with two incredible specialists in the field. I would love to first introduce the format in case this is anyone's first webinar. Um, welcome. You can post questions in the chat or the Q&A and we will do our best to address those. And the format will be, we're going to have our speaker, Mary Griffin, and then Anna Yakubovich speaking. And then we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. So that's where you as an audience get to ask direct questions and we'll do our best to get to all of the questions. So if anyone is getting CEUs for this, uh, they should come to you in about 10 days. The details are in the chat. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us and Catlin Morgan, our education specialist at IOA, can help you with all of that. So uh, as Greg said, my name is Allison Moritz. I am the director of the Enrichment Center, which is a day program that specializes in care for folks with dementia located here in San Francisco's Presidio. And I'm also acting director of our new program, Compania, which supports the entire care team as they go through the journey of caring, somebody, caring for somebody with dementia. As we know, it's a unique, and difficult journey and it affects all of us in ways that we don't always anticipate. We can be prepared and we can plan and it really 
comes down to the moment that we're in this experience and how we lean on one another. So that's really the impetus behind this meeting today, as it's incredibly important to know what resources are available to us, what to expect, who to lean on, and everything that is in place to support us. So I would like to start by introducing Mary Griffin. She is a colleague and friend of mine, registered nurse, master's in public health. She is the vice president of the Institute on Aging in-home care and support services. And I'd like to welcome Mary. Hi, Mary. Now, so since this is a live webinar, we are rolling with things as we do in life. So we're gonna test the sound to make sure that we can hear Mary. So Mary, go ahead and let's see if we can hear you. I hope you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Yay. Well, Mary, I would love for you to introduce yourself and speak to your incredible professional background, as well as your personal interest in the field. Yeah, thank you so much, Allison. It's a, a privilege and a pleasure to be here today. Um, I, I have been in the field of, of home care for the last 35 years and in the field of um, dealing with individuals with memory impairment for almost that amount of time and real recognize that there's just a huge need for people to understand the journey that you go through when you're dealing with uh, a loved one with dementia. And I personally have had, uh, dealt with that with both a mother and a sister and brother-in-law. And it's I understand the difficulties and the challenges. So we're hoping today we can answer some of those questions. My background is nursing. So I've been a nurse for 35 plus years and um, recognize that sometimes it's not even the clinical issues, but more the uh, social and behavioral and some issues that you don't always anticipate with uh, working with a loved one. So I'm very excited about being here today and hope that we can answer some of your questions. Our big issue is that there be no surprises because we felt that we all run into the surprises when we're dealing with trying to transition someone from home to a assisted living or trying to get some in-home care that sometimes there's a lot of challenges in that and we want to try to deal with some of those today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. Um, Institute on Aging, for those of our listeners that maybe aren't familiar or even those who are, can you speak a little bit to the mission statement of IOA and our role in dementia? So the Institute on Aging is it's an absolutely wonderful organization. I've been here about two and a half years, and I'm very privileged to be part of the organization, a nonprofit organization that was established about 40 years ago in San Francisco. A group of physicians out of Mount Zion Hospital decided that there was a need to develop a program that would help with the needs of those that are aging in the community. And they put together a program that started out quite small and has now grown into serving the whole Bay Area and even outside the barrier. And I think the important thing to know is that those recognition that aging can be a challenge, it can also be an asset. And that a lot of, of the aging population, and I'm included in that, um, recognize that you know there's some challenges in, in your physical and other states, but there's also some opportunity and just trying to connect people to resources that are in the community. So I, I, I'm very proud to be part of this organization and I think that they deliver a terrific service throughout the community. We in the home care division de deliver the, the home care to people that might need a little bit of extra assistance in home with their daily needs, but also our newer program, Compania, which we'll talk a little bit more about, um, delivers services to those that are working through the journey of having a loved one with dementia and helps them to sort of connect with resources in the community and have an opportunity to learn more about what is available to them and their loved one and also provides them with some support and uh, opportunity to work with care coaches and, and other individuals that will help them navigate through that uh, sort of difficult challenge in life. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, someone asked in the chat, is this specifically geared towards only those living with dementia? And I know that um, the home care department doesn't necessarily specialize only for folks with dementia. So can you tell us a little bit more of the scope and who really gets provided services through IOA home care? So as one of the things that I learned when I was dealing with my own family members was I wasn't, I mean, I've been a nurse for many years, as I, as I said, and I didn't realize that there's, you know, not a lot out there that tells you about what do you do with a loved one that suddenly needs some help at home or needs some help uh, with, you know, activities of daily living and these things. So I found that it's very hard to navigate through all of these th choices out there. You're, you know, you're saying, okay, would, would, would it be better for my loved one to be at home? It might be better for them to be in a facility. I'm not sure what to do, who's going to pay for it. And all of that came down on me when I was dealing with that with my mother. It was like, well, what do I do? I, I have this person that's just been discharged from the hospital. They have all these needs and I'm not exactly sure what I should do. So our home care department will deal with the, the issues of someone who wants to stay in their own home and wants to remain there and they want to have some help at home. And that's one part. But the other part is that they may choose that they it's not appropriate to stay at home. They no longer can manage all of the things that go on managing a home. And they may decide that it's more appropriate to be in a, a community where they can have some assistance with their meals and, uh, you know, preparation of not maintaining a whole a home care environment. So there's a lot of options out there, but you know, you have to sort of navigate through all of these. And that's what I think we're, we're trying to resolve in some of our dealings at IOA is that it's not one choice. There are many choices for someone that is at that stage in life. Thank you, Mary. And I know Greg touched on this a little bit, but it seems as though really there is a continuum of care and it's so important and I think it's become incredibly clear to us, particularly over this past year, how important and just incredibly uh, just central to our quality of life, that human touch and that connection to one another. And so it seems as though that tra trajectory really does go from caring for someone at home to having that really smooth transition into a facility and making that a supported system, right? So can you speak to how a program like Compania might help a family feel that sense of guidance through that process? So one of the things that I think people face when they loved one has had a diagnosis of memory impairment or some form of dementia is what do I do now? You know, what is it that I that I need to do to support them and and make them be able to maintain the quality of life that I hope they would have. And what we're trying to do with Compania is provide that support both to the caregiver, but also to the person that has dementia. And we find that the caregiver is often feeling overwhelmed by caring for a loved one with dementia, and they don't know where to turn to, or they don't even know that they need to turn to someone. They're so overwhelmed. They're like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. And what we're trying to do under our program with Compania is have an opportunity for them to work with a care coach. This is someone that will be dedicated to their care, to the needs of their loved one. It will provide them with a support system that they can call upon any day of the week, Monday through Friday, 12 hours a day, and ask some questions about the care of their loved one, but also provide them with some opportunity to look at other resources that might help them, support groups, and work with their physicians and uh, individuals that they're working with to make sure that their loved one's getting the right medications, the right support. And I think sometimes people overlook that they have that need. I, I know as a having a nursing background, I thought I could do it all, but I found out that I needed support too. I needed support from outside. To, to learn how to care for my loved one and make sure that they got the best care possible. 
Yeah, Mary, I agree. And I think all too often we find that people come across our paths professionally long after the point of burnout. And it's an incredibly uh, difficult issue because there are resources and there is a lot of help and it's available. And the old adage, it's a cliche, but it's really true that it takes a village and Mm -hmm. are these incredible support systems. And sometimes that asking for help from home care, a beautiful facility, that really does make the difference for all parties involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would love to now introduce Anya, and she is the um, Director of um, Community Relations for Kensington, and it is wonderful to have you here. And I will let you go ahead and give your uh, professional and personal bio. I'd love to ask a little bit more about Kensington and what sets it apart, and then we'll all come back and I would love to open it to a Q&A for the group and we could have more of a conversative uh, Q&A question session to hi Anya. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Anya Yakubovich, Director of Memory and Care Community Relations at Kensington Place in Redwood City, North Atherton. As a caregiver for my grandparents, I understand the journey of aging and the responsibility of making the sound decisions on their behalf. I truly relate to our residents and their loved ones. I drive sales by profession, but always through compassion and empathy. I have great confidence in our team who truly love and care for our residents as they do their own families. I have about 14 years of experience in sales and marketing. And I know the standards of excellence and I confidently promote Kensington Place as best in class dedicated memory care. Um, In terms of Kensington, we are a dedicated memory care community and understand the challenges behind caring for our residents as their dementia progresses. Uh, I think Greg already stated this, but I wanted to repeat um, our promise at Kensington is to love and care for our residents as if they were our own family. Uh, We specialize in all aspects of dementia and our programs of care and service are clinically comprehensive, highly personalized and tender. We are skilled and prepared to address the predictable changes that come with each phase of progressive memory loss. And to better meet our residents needs, we offer two distinctive neighborhoods. One is called Connections and the other is Haven. In Connections, residents are able to actively participate in daily routines and activities that help them feel safe, secure, and successful. In Haven, residents require a higher level of clinical assistance and also care, which also increases comfort and reduces agitation. So in both neighborhoods, we support for, um, we offer support for our caregivers and families, and we have a generous and ongoing program Um, due to the fact that we are family after all. So thank you for for being here with us. And uh, Allison, any questions? Yeah, that's so wonderful. Um, I have so many great questions. I wanted to start by saying, because Kensington specializes in memory care, what do you feel that separates and sets Kensington apart from other facilities that might have a separate memory care unit or places that have um, solely memory care as their main operative as well? Sure. So in both of our neighborhoods, we offer um, our 24 hour seven days nursing. So licensed nursing on site 24 hours a day. We have medication management, diabetes management, um, including injections by professionals as well. We offer extensive support programs, which include wheelchair assistance. We have two to three person transfer assist. We also offer wound care and uh, hospice as well. Uh, Kensington care team also specializes in memory care, but we collaborate directly with all of our directors to make the program as special as possible. This means that we offer individualized service plans that are tailored to the personal wants Uh, and physical needs, cognitive, social, emotional, and spiritual needs of the resident. We have a comprehensive and ongoing caregiver and staff training geared towards memory care. 
which enables us to provide the most excellent care in the industry. We also accommodate uh, special diets such as diabetes. We offer gluten-free, vegetarian, and this is overseen by our amazing uh, chef, Tony, who has been with Kensington from day one, and shout out, Tony. Uh, pocket programming, this is my favorite. Uh, pocket programming to enable each resident to participate in small group activities. And this is solely based on their interests and abilities. So somebody likes flower arrangements, somebody likes to take a walk. Um, we have a horticulture program, pottery class, and different aspects that really creates Kensington as a gold standard in the industry. And um, the last one, and also another favorite of mine, is the staff to resident ratio on days and evenings, which is based on residents' needs. We have a really high caregiver to resident ratio, one of the highest in the industry, and I am very proud to represent Kensington Senior Living and Kensington of Redwood City North Atherton. That's wonderful, thank you so much. So you mentioned the staff. Um, I'm just a little curious as far as um, how your staff stands out from other staff possibly? Well, we have a high standard. So we base our staffing ratio on the number of residents we have. Currently we are at capacity. So we have a high number of uh, staff members. We train accordingly and our fantastic memory care director, Molly and Christine, our director of nursing, collaboratively uh, train our caregivers to make sure that they are aware of the new residents that come in, their likes and dislikes, um, looking at what is their favorite meal. So if we have a new resident who loves ice cream, Tony will make sure that we have the ice cream um, at hand. And uh, we have a wonderful um, activity department. And in that activity department, we have Viridiana, who is our activities director. And she is fantastic in collaborating with all of the families and directors to create wonderful pocket programs for each of our residents so that they can enjoy their life and also be creative at the same time. Can I jump in? Please. That's great. <laughs> I, really love, I really love talking about our team. Um, you know, we were, we were, with the family orientation that we have here at Kensington, something that really just surprises me every single day is how well our entire community, not just the caregivers, not just the nurses, make an active response to make sure that our residents feel loved and cared for and to meet them where they are, when they are. And um, it's been beautiful to watch the different types of, you know, from dining, from housekeeping, the, the positions that you wouldn't necessarily see be that kind of caring influence, take that initiative. You know, we'll see our dining team sitting around doing activities with residents. We see our concierge spending time with someone who used to be a secretary and having them answer phone calls with them. The little things like that, that make our team, um, that motivate our team to be better supports for our residents is incredible. And it makes me wanna be a better leader too, right? You know, if you're gonna lead a community like this, you wanna spend that time making sure that this is true, that this is the promise, that this is exactly where we want to be as a community. So I thought I'd chime in there, but thank you for asking that question because I love this team. That's beautiful. And I think to get into this field, you have to be a special person. And this both organizations have incredibly special people. Um, it's just wonderful to see. Um, Mary, we're, we're getting some really great questions and I wanna just jump right in here with everybody. Do you wanna come back on the screen and let's get into the nitty gritty of what this whole process looks like. Um, before I get to some of these questions, I just wanna see quickly, Mary, um, how would you say that the staff of home care at IOA differ differentiates from other home care agencies? We'll wait for the sound for you. Hang on. Let's see if we can hear you. Hang on. Go ahead and keep talking, Mary. We'll see if it comes for sound. We can't hear you, but we did earlier. So that is hopeful. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Oh, <laughs> technology. Don't we all love it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> A year later into all this, and we're still struggling with some of this. So I'm sorry, Allison, your, your question again. So how we talked a little bit about how Kensington staff stands out. How would you say that the staff, uh, particularly the home care team at Institute on Aging, differentiates from other organizations, particularly with their expertise in dementia? Right. So one of the things that we recognized um, when we were starting our Compania program was that we really wanted to have home care aides that had some knowledge and not necessarily expertise, but certainly some additional experience and training in, in the care of someone with memory impairment and dementia. So we put together a program that we're working with an outside vendor that actually provides them with um, individual training on the care and, the, and, the, and, and also learning about the needs of someone who has memory impairment. So there might be things that come up, like someone who's having some hallucinations, someone who's having some sundowner syndrome, or other things that might make it difficult to understand what's going on. Our home care aides now have training in that. They can understand and, and de deal directly with that without you know, being uh, confused or concerned about that individual. So I think that's been great because they feel like they have much more um, ability to, to work with individuals with dementia but also the families appreciate that. Absolutely, that's beautiful. And Anya, if you wanna come back in, we could start fielding questions to the group. I already have um, a great question here. And um, we've all been affected in numerous ways by COVID over the last year. And I think it's been incredibly um, impactful on our sense of well-being, but we've really seen how important it is to have that human connection. So I'd love to open this up to you too. If you could speak to the importance of that human connection, companionship, particularly for someone who is living with dementia. Absolutely, that's a great question. First, um, I'll go into the point of my professionalism as a sales director. When I have families uh, call me, uh, I don't talk about how much the suite costs, what uh, is the dimension of the room. I get to know the family as a family, the resident as a resident, because we're all human beings. And I always sit down and I put myself in the shoes of what if I was looking for assisted living for my grandfather and grandmother. And the humanity comes out, we are human beings and we do this in a way with love and compassion. So it is also important to create an environment of comfort for those people. They are having a really hard time. It is an emotional process. Some of the families that I've spoken with think that they completely lost their loved one. Once they come into a memory care such as Kensington, they are able to become a family again and offer love and companionship in a different way. But the residents that move in also have a hard time in the beginning. It takes some time for adjustment. So having the caregivers that we have who are especially trained for dementia and Alzheimer's and also mild cognitive impairment, um, it's very important to have people who love what they do. And our team is probably the example of a great team who loves what they do with, with a lot of energy and compassion. And once the resident or the person with dementia feels that love and compassion, they too will be calm and feel loved and just uh, be in a great space. So that's what I can give you from my end. Absolutely. And Anya, you had mentioned early that you provide hospice services there and palliative care, um, in case those are new terms for anybody. It's really end of life care. Um, we know that this is a trajectory and we talked a little bit about the process of moving in. And um, I'd love to hear both of you speak on the services that are provided around end of life stages and how you both accommodate that phase. I will speak on it and then I will pass on. Um, I can tell you that we partner up with hospice agencies um, and our partners 
from the outside agencies and we offer palliative care services in our community. Our compassionate platform is that we um, have a distinct neighborhood called Haven for people who are in the mid to late stage um, area. And of course, we offer an extension um, of hospice as well if needed. Now, uh, residents who are in our connections neighborhood, which is our beginning to mid stage level, also if they need hospice care are um, okay to be on that same neighborhood. So it doesn't matter which distinct neighborhood, um, the answer is yes, we offer palliative care. Lovely. Yeah, thanks, Allison. So this has become a very big area for us in the last several years that uh, many clients of ours decide that they would like to remain at home at the end stage of life. So for those that do and the family has decided that they would like them to stay in their own home, we are working a lot with other hospices outside and trying to keep people at home as long as possible. And that re requires that we have sometimes round the clock care. So it might be 24 hour care where the family is really feeling pretty, pretty tired and maybe a little bit burned out of providing care to a loved one. And so we're providing them with that 24 hour care, sometimes on a very temporary basis, just for a few weeks to make a decision about what other choices they need to make. But sometimes it's a little bit more long-term as long as their loved one needs that kind of care. So this has become a bigger area for us where families are seeing that they really need that, the respite and the help with caring for a loved one. And we're, we're very happy to provide that. A lot of our home care aides have come from either working in hospice or having training in end-of-life care. And they appreciate and understand the needs of the family just needing a little bit of time off from that care from someone that might be near the end of their life. Thank you so much. Um, we have another question. This is geared more towards uh, challenging behaviors that present themselves sometimes. So this might be anything from wandering, uh, being up in the night, uh, inappropriate touch even. Can you speak a little to um, some of the extra help or care that a facility or home care can really offer a family in this field? Anything challenging? Well, in terms of uh, having a community, uh, we offer that caregiver to resident ratio that will allow for us to um, help with challenging behaviors. So um, for example, uh, we had a resident that just moved in and he is the sweetest man in the world, but he also misses his home. So what we like to say is we redirect the resident. So we have a delayed egress door system in place where it is a sound alarm and there's an earpiece in each of our caregivers um, ears uh, to announce that a resident is um, not eloping but pushing on the door. Um, another thing that we have is 24 hour concierge service at the front, which is another gentle approach. But having um, a company such as IOA is also helpful. So sometimes we you know, need to upgrade our staffing. Somebody is sick. Um, this is when we would like to call Institute on Aging for assistance as well. And um, we believe in great partnerships with wonderful companies such as Institute on Aging. So just to answer that question, Allison, and um, I think that one of the things that is the most challenging for families is dealing with some, some of the, what might be called inappropriate or disturbing um, you know, behaviors, and it's just because there's not knowledge that, you know, this might happen with someone. So when someone's suddenly having hallucinations or they may be having wandering at night or, you know, as we, we know, the sundowner syndrome or that starts to happen in the early or late evening, it's like very peculiar. Like, why is this happening? And so I think part of it is, is giving some background in why that's happening and then, and then having the interventions that they can do that are not disturbing. What I, what I hate to see is when a family member tries to correct someone who says, you know, I see someone in the corner of the room or I'm, you know, having something that to them is very real. And we try to correct that and say, you know, oh, there's no one over there. Don't pay attention to that. You, you really want to try to, as 
Anya said, redirect them and say, well, there might be someone over there, but it's a nice person. Let's look over here now and look at this, you know, travel log or I mean, something that might be of interest to them. So I think that's the thing we really work with our home care aides on is trying to learn that it's not a quiz show. You don't have to have the right answer. Like, you know, this is the right answer. You're wrong and I'm right. It's more about what helps them to be able to feel comfortable and safe. And so there's a lot of work that we do in home care and, and you know, certainly partnering, partnering with organizations like Kensington Place to say, let's try to help the family understand why these behaviors are happening. Absolutely. And like you said, compassionately uh, meeting all of these challenges and the more that our caregivers are equipped to face what might happen, um, the better off they'll be. And so uh, Mary, someone asked a question specifically for you about who fields uh, a lot of the phone calls that might come in when a caregiver is asking for help. And this might be regarding the Compania program. So if someone is calling in with a need, um, who and what might they expect? So in Campania, we have our care coaches, as we call them, available 12 hours a day, five days a week, um, that someone can call in and just have a basic question about, you know, this is happening with my loved one, I don't know what to do, or they've just been put on a new medication, it's, you know, is this going to, is this appropriate? Um, and that's very helpful because sometimes these things happen at, you know, in the spur of the moment and you're feeling really overwhelmed and you don't know where to turn. And, and what Companion offers them is that support, your, your own personal care coach that can say, well, let's talk about it and let's figure out what we can do and give them some advice. So I think that we really feel that this program can be beneficial to anyone, whether they're in a, whether their loved one's in a facility or a community um, in the hospital, skilled nursing or assisted living, at, you know, like in a Kensington where there's a lot of, of support, but this might even be an additional support where I'm, you know, it's six, seven o'clock at night and I'm concerned because my loved one didn't know who I was when I called them and it's making me sad and they just want to talk to somebody. And, and so they can call their care coach and say, you know, what can I do about this? What, what is some of the things that might, you know, help me and help them through this journey? And so that's what we're really excited about, that we can work with, with communities, we can work with uh, skilled nursing, we can work with people that are at home and give them some opportunity to have some place to call and have a care coach that really directs them into the right, right, right place. Absolutely. Um, Thank you. My uh, connection went out for a second. So if I lost you guys, apologies, but I'm back. Um, <laughs> I can see you. I hope you can see me. Um, yes. I, great, great. I think that's the added benefit uh, a lot of us know about hotlines that maybe the Alzheimer's Association or something bigger organizations have, which are um, incredibly helpful. But there's something about being able to call your team and being able to call your facility and have someone answer who knows your loved one and give you that real personal touch. And it's not sort of a general answer and it's more of a um, really specified skill and it, something that your family uniquely needs. Um, someone asked in the chat how you can get a care coach and you can go to the, um, we'll talk about this a little bit more at the end, but uh, the. Institute on Aging website, and it'll have the Compania link, and it's a great program. Um, and we'll put that out again at the end. Um, someone did ask, how do we engage our people? Um, what, uh, what can we do at home? What can we offer at a facility? Just some ideas about keeping our folks um, active and stimulated. So I can talk well, on what, that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say um, doing different types of activities. So it doesn't necessarily mean if a uh, loved one is no longer interested in their past activities that they once loved, like bingo or artwork or anything like that. You can, um, you can make it work. So we like to engage our residents in that pocket programming where we talk about what their past interests were, what their current interests are, and then we merge them together to create a program of activities that will interest these 
uh, residents of ours and it really creates a really nice atmosphere when we have a grandchild come in to visit their loved one or grandparent and, and participate in these activities. It's really fun. Um, I think Greg is doing a tea uh, party with the residents pretty soon and you know, Greg loves tea, our executive director. So uh, we're doing tea and biscuits and the lovely ladies, they love, love, love the fine china and all of that. It's wonderful. So that's for me. You know, we're moving back towards that, which I love. Go ahead, Mary. So I think that, you know, the thing that's the most important, I think one of the reasons that we had this webinar was to talk about the journey and uh, what families are facing. And, you know, I think the important thing is to recognize that each, each person that comes into either home care or into a community has unique needs and, and unique um, background. And what I always find interesting is when we try to have someone who was an engineer work on a, a, a project about making, you know, uh, uh, origami or something. And, and they may say, I'm not really, that's not my interest, you know. So you want to kind of find where people are coming from and try to develop a, a opportunity for them to continue to feel success in some kind of an activity. And I know Allison, uh, you're very involved in that at the Enrichment Center, uh, the daycare program that we have through Institute on Aging, try to get activities that people are really feeling interested in and, and love doing. So in home care, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to find out what was this person interested in, what did they like to do, and try not to make somebody do gardening who hated their, their fingers getting dirty, you know. So you're going to go, let's go out and plant plants. And they're going, I don't want to do that. So we're really looking at what, what would be something that this individual would have found interesting. Maybe, you know, looking through some travel magazines if they traveled a lot or having an opportunity to do some things with their hands that really makes sense. So I think that's the important thing is, is to know where someone is coming from and then not try to redirect them into something that we think would be appropriate. Right. I think that's incredibly valid. And it's about meeting them where they are at and uh, finding what gives them spark and energy as well as staff too. Because if you have a certain exuberance for something, it is contagious. And so just like Greg's tea parties, when he's excited about it, everyone can be pulled into that excitement. Now we did talk about how we do need to lean on our community. And we might notice that we need some of these services, but families might say, where do we start? Um, what's the whole process? So how would one, you know, start home care? Or how would someone enter Kensington? Well, how one would enter Kensington is by contacting yours truly. So um, here I am on a serious <laughs> tone. Um, I'm really proud to work for Kensington. I mean, it's an incredible company and the partners and just, wonderful staff and directors to work with. Um, I truly feel that if you're happy to go to work, that means something. And I really feel when I go to work, I am happy. Um, I personally had, um, I lo lost a loved one last year and all of my fellow directors came together to help me overcome this um, terrible experience in my life. And we all collectively support each other um, likewise, when I have tours and when I have uh, families coming in to inquire about Kensington, we work as a team. But something I like to talk on is um, how to tour and what questions to ask. And I know we have that question pop up. I wanted to highlight some of the areas that seemed to be helpful last time when I did a live uh, presentation pre-COVID. So some of the major questions, Allison, people should be asking in a tour is, what is the staff to resident ratio? Um, that's very important. What kind of experience and training does the staff have? So for example, with Kensington, we offer different training for each department. Um, and then how many staffers are on duty at night? So for example, if somebody calls out sick, is there a uh, you know, a companionship with Institute on Aging that we can call for an extra caregiver. Um, can staff administer medications? This is very important. Um, in terms of Kensington, we definitely can. 
Um, our uh, administration is registered nurses and nurses, and we do not have med techs. And we do have an on-site nurse 24 hours, seven days a week. That is another question to ask, is there a nurse on site? Um, do you do an initial assessment prior to admission? Um, assessments are very important. They tell a story, paint a picture of the upcoming resident that is coming to the community, but also gives an idea of the care expectations. Can the community actually care for that person? Um, what type of units and apartments do you have available? What is the monthly cost? Is there additional cost? For example, with Kensington, we have rent, care level, and medication management. Um, also, is there a wait list and how many are on the wait list and what's the policy? Um, community fees are very important. It's um, a number one question I always get, what is a community fee? And um, for Kensington, it's essentially a entrance fee. Um, tell me something about the current residents. So this is a really important question because if the director or whoever you're working with does not know how to identify the residents and what their loves and likes and dislikes are, then that's probably not the right community. So we want to make sure that we're all engaged and we know everything about the residents or as much as we can. Um, is there outdoor space for walking? What's the discharge policy? Um, what additional services are uh, charged on top of what is provided? Um, the billing and payment policies and um, anything that comes up. So laundry, haircuts, whatever it may be. But this is my top list of the 15, 20 items I listed that I think are very helpful during the research process. And um, I know that uh, most communities are doing virtual tours. Some are doing in-person. We've opened up for in-person tours. So it's been wonderful. And I'll hand it back to you, Allison. That's great. Thank you for sharing that personal story too, Anya. Um, I think everyone can, uh, can know that this is absolutely work that we take home with us. You, everyone who works doing what we do, it, it comes home with you. And part of that is not only the participants and residents and clients, but the staff. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Mary, how would somebody start the home care process? So the, the thing about home care is I think it might, it might be a little different from looking at a community is that it's often an urgent need. So we typically find people are coming out of the hospital after having had an acute illness or uh, you know, a fall or something that required them to be in the hospital, or they may have moved to a skilled nursing facility and now they need to have some home care. And that's why this whole webinar today is about no surprises. And I think that's exactly what happens to people. Like they're suddenly faced with mom or dad or my loved one needs to find a place to live other than either their home or they need some help. So we often get calls that are, you know, emergent. I mean, they, they're going to be discharged from the hospital and they can't go home because they either have a need that requires more supervision. So we often get those calls uh, a late afternoon, sometimes Friday afternoons, where the hospital discharge planner, care manager is saying this person's going to need help because they can't go home alone. And so we run around and you know search through our home care aides that we think will be appropriate fit and 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 try to fill that need as soon as possible. We don't often get a long time frame to admit people into home care, and that's why I want anyone listening to this webinar to know we understand that can be a critical, crucial moment where you have to make a decision about what do I do? It may be not, it may not be appropriate or able to be uh, moved into a community for at least a week or two. So in that interim period, you may need some help with getting some home care to care for your loved one, make sure they're safe at home. So that's what often happens. And um, it's challenging for us, but we all almost always are able to fulfill that need where we can get somebody out there to help for that brief period, or if it turns into a longer period, that's fine. But it's often like we need help for a week or two while we're making a decision about whether mom or dad needs to move into a community or they're going to sell their home or, you know, all those things that come up when someone has a 
very serious, um, you know, either injury, they've fallen and, you know, broken a hip or something, or they may have had, a, you know, more sustaining kind of thing where they have been diagnosed with severe illness. But we're able to do that. And what we like doing is working with communities like Kensington Place where we can say, we'll have them at home for the next week or two, at, you know, while they're looking at facilities that can manage their care. And then they have that opportunity to move on to a to another um, facility or, or community where they can get that care where it might not be appropriate any longer at home. So we decide, you know, it's not safe for them, even with a caregiver at this point. And that, that's a good relationship to have. But I'm going to tell you that this is a surprise for a lot of people. And this is why, you know, we're having this webinar today where you suddenly have a loved one that was doing well. And, you know, they take a fall, they break their hip, they have to have hip replacement, they're under anesthesia, and they come out with some pretty severe memory impairment because of the anesthesia. They no longer can be at home. And so it's a quick decision and sometimes overwhelming. Like, what do I do? And we want them to know there is help out here. They can call places like the Institute on Aging. They can call Kensington Place. And we can help direct them to the resources that will help them manage that care. Exactly. Uh, it really is about prepared for the unexpected. And that sounds con you know, contradictory, but there are ways to prepare. And I can't emphasize enough that you can always call and visit these facilities. You can always call and speak to the Institute on Aging. Um, so, so somebody asked the qualifications of the care coaches for Compania, and they get to uh, do the same dementia specialist training that the home care team does. It's through an organization and the acronym is CARES, C-A-R-E-S. And in addition to that, just like I said, we all take this work home with us. All of the Compania care coaches uh, they meet daily and they talk about issues that come up um, big, small, medium, on a larger scale, just with specific clients. And the program was developed with a uh, team of uh, CERC fellows, uh, which is, uh, it was two folks from Stanford who spent their uh, time uh, doing geriatric research on caregivers and how to support caregivers. And we also have Mary as a consultant. So there's the medical and the social side. And we talk about our clients every single day. And um, it's really that communication behind the scenes so that we can bring all of our clients uh, the best care, the best planning. And then again, working with organizations like Kensington so that we can make that transition and the continuity of care as smooth as possible, because it is challenging, it's hard, and you are preparing for the unexpected, absolutely. So I mentioned um, waiting to the 11th hour. Yeah, exactly. It's better to know what's out there before you need it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so as we do wrap up our time, we have about four minutes left. I know Anya, Mary, and I could go on all day because uh, the subject is so near and dear to our hearts. So um, if we want to bring Greg back in for wrap up, I did want to say that um, for the Institute on Aging, uh, the website is an incredible resource and um, all the programs are listed there. You can find home care, the Enrichment Center, which is a day program that's reopening, as well as Compania and really uh, pick the services that you need, but you can always just call and ask too. More than happy to field any questions. We love shoppers. Um, and if Greg and Anya want to speak to contacting and reaching out to you guys. Yeah, um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll start and Anya will help close out with me, but just wanted to thank you all and thank you for this opportunity to kind of tag team this together. If there's anything that we've learned um, in working in this field, it's that we need partnerships like this to be able to support one another as we're constantly learning different things and learning different nuances, especially when it comes to the aging population. Um, there's no you know, right or wrong answer, but there is there are people here who are working hard to make this easier for everyone. And I'm very thankful for IOA to be able to be that support for a lot of um, family members and people who are dealing with this. And you know, we at Kensington, we're also, we receive every type of family when they are, however they are, and it's been, it's been a process for us all. And 
you know, again, the bigger picture being that the family orientation that works in this type of field is very important. And that goes into institutions that also goes into communities. So thank you both. Thank you all. Senior living and, and doing research and, and finding the right community is hard. So if anybody has any questions or needs resources, even if they are not looking at the moment, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, my information is on our Kensington Redwood City website. And just like Greg said, it's very important for us to partner up together and, and do this as a team. Um, it's an absolute honor to work with Institute on Aging. And uh, thank you all for your time today.